Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Blood Drive Season 1 Episode 2, it is called Welcome to Pixie Swallow, full spoilers for the episode as always. So I'll, I'll tell you an interesting story, and I say interesting, uh, interesting is maybe a strong word, uh, but an a- anecdote of me watching this episode, I decided, oh I'm having pizza for dinner, I think I'll, I'll watch the episode whilst I eat my pizza. Which is not something that I decide to do with most TV. You know, if I'm watching Saul or I'm watching, you know, anything like that, Handmaid's Tale, it's, no, no, I want to focus on that show. Food's a distraction. I don't eat while I'm watching serious stuff like that. But oh, but, I do. I, I, don't, I, I don't. I don't do it. I respect the show. But, with something like Blood Drive, it's a bit more easy going. It's, it's, it's just fun. It's whatever. It, it's yeah. verging on popcorn-y. Exactly, and if you can eat popcorn, why not eat pizza? So I'm eating pizza, and then I had to I had to stop. I had to stop the episode and go watch something else while I ate my pizza because this was really making it hard to enjoy eating. Uh, once it got to a certain point, you're so weak. Nah, I was fine through most of it. Like the, the talk of cannibals, the talk of it being human meat, none of that bothered me. It's when there was a nail in something that he bit into. And the sound effects of him, like, feeling it in his mouth. That was like, nope, 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 nope. Need to go watch something else that doesn't have disgusting eating things going on. So I can eat. Oh, that, that, that doesn't bother me at all when it comes to eating food. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I'm going to get a giant picture of a syringe just to creep you out anytime you uh, give me cheek. Uh, very good. Uh, Connor's got a fear of syringes, if you didn't know. He mm. can't look at the screen if someone's got a syringe. Just not even doing anything with it, just waving it about. Well, he's... waving it about's not too bad. It's 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 just if it's being used. I, 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 need to con- I need to find out where I can buy syringes. And I'm going to think I'm up to no good. I really just want some syringes lying around here so I can wave it at the camera every once in a while to upset Connor. Aye, because, yeah, that'll never look threatening, will it? <laughs> I'll, I'll even learn to sort of use one of myself. Just not, for, <laughs> not with anything in it. Just, just for the purpose of, you know, creeping you out. How about a needle in the eye? Does that creep you out? I have a, a needle in anywhere creeps me out. Yeah, but an eye must be more creepy though. I don't know, it's equal. Nah, see, a needle in an eye would probably creep me out. But that's because of something getting stabbed into the eye. It's not really because it's a needle. Anything gets oh, stabbed yeah, into the yeah. eye creeps me out. It's it, it's no worse than than it going in an arm to me. It's all equally horrifying. I can eat while, the, while, while all this is going on, no problem. Of course you can. So, obviously there was cannibalism going on in this episode. That was the main gist of the episode. We had this sort of diner with a motel where all the drivers stopped here for sort of resting before the next race. And uh, the, the, the cook and his family were killing people and using their meat because beef's expensive, chickens is practically extinct, as he points out, and this is where we are. Uh, and that was kind of it. I think there was some character beats. There were some st- subplots going on with other main characters, obviously. But that was the that was the main plot with uh, with Arthur and Grace. Yeah. Um. But it was okay. It was fine. Like it was, there was some... Yeah. It was. It was. It was fun for what it was. Yeah. I, I liked because uh, Fat Elvis, uh, bless him, has uh, perished from this earth, and we see him hanging upside down, and the, the, the chefs kind of cutting off his head but the waitress is sort of getting in and out and the door's sort of swinging shut and you're only seeing parts of it but you just see his head eventually like pop off and like blood squirting and it's oh it's great it was pretty good I'll have a good bit of blood squirting so I do I mean you get plenty of them in this show yeah uh, that wasn't the top blood moment of the episode though let's talk about Slink's subplot Slink of course because uh, we're still episode 2 so I'll, I'll re-establish who each person is as I'm going here Slink of course is the head of the blood drive he's the one who runs it for the Heart Corporation who are loosely tied with it uh, well I say loosely I mean I think they're heavily tied to it but it's not exactly their public persona as the as the blood drive that's more of like a behind a shady behind closed doors uh, yeah off the books records, although it sounds like they want to eventually make it a, a public thing. They're... Yeah, this is, this is a little test run. Yeah. Honestly, I, I think this is some early seeding for season two. I feel like that's how you make season two bigger, is you like, no, no, the entire country knows about it now, and it's all on TV, and it's like it's like the running man, but it's the blood drive, and, and that type of setting. I can see it. Yeah, that's, that's, what, it. I, that's what I think season two. If we get a season two, I, I feel like that's what it's going to be. I could be completely wrong. But that's what I, that's what I think it would be. Uh, 
But he, he's nervous. Slink's nervous because he goes to the, the 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 building, the company, and he's he's told to wait. And this other guy is just sitting there, all nervous. And he's like, and he's this really annoying, sort of typical generic guy. But he talks a lot. He's really chatty. He's like, oh, I'm here for a job interview. And, oh, they're replacing someone. And Slink gets worried that he's he's the one getting replaced. That it's his job that's being taken. Uh, so later on in the episode, when the guy comes back, he's like, I got the job, they offered it to me right there on the spot. Slink grabs his briefcase and beats him to death with it uh, until there's just blood everywhere. It is absolutely beautiful. I love this scene. It is pretty fantastic. Like, there is, I love how the receptionist just doesn't even look over. Well, you, do, you know what, do you know what I'm really appreciating about this show? Is that I love how they're really playing into like the, the caricatures of everything. Like, uh, even this receptionist who's sitting there, she's even got this thing where she's just constantly answering the phone and going, oh, uh, Hearts Corporation, please hold. Hearts Corporation, yeah. please hold. She's, she says that maybe, like, 30 times. And she, she's, not even, she's not even on the screen for that long, but she still <laughs> says it, like, 30 times. It's most of yeah. her dialogue is just repeating that sense. Uh, like, they're, they're really upping the, the cliches of everything and making everything heightened. And So even mm. when they're doing like a kind of typical... Well, the cannibal plot's kind of typical, although it does lead to some fun moments when they realise and they're throwing up and all the rest of it. Like she has a corn dog at one point and it's, you know, that, that corn dog was properly just a cock. <laughs> She's like, uh, shut up. Yeah. Like you say, it's very typical. And that's, I think, probably what a lot of this show is going to be. Like, just mm. very general ideas that we've probably seen a lot. But it's very stylized, though. But yeah, it, it's putting its style on it to give it its own s- s- thing. The uh, the slink stuff at the company, especially, I like. It's obviously that ended in a joke as well because the one of the the versions of Aki uh, who's running the company, of course, she's the uh, she was the copy turned out to be a robot, but she's actually working for the company, so there's tons of copies of her. And this one's the business copy. Yeah. She comes down and she's like, yeah, we just hired him as the new head of maintenance, which is not his job, obviously. And he's like, oh, dear. And as he's getting up, he slips in the blood a little bit. Yeah, uh, it's the way he just fixes his hair after as well. Uh, it's like, oh, I've, I've lost my composure a little bit. I just slide the hair over. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That was good stuff. And that's not even the only slipping in blood action we get in this episode, because the... I think it's the cook's son, but he also made out with the cook's daughter, so I'm not hundred. I'm not hundred percent I mean, sure if he's either the son and it's incest, or if it's just the, the daughter's boyfriend. I, I got the impression it was incest. They were playing up into the whole redneck hillbilly stereotype thing. Let's like say yeah, everything's yeah. heightened. I, I could see it because that's how we opened the episode. We opened the episode with this ass shot of the, the daughter being a waitress in the in the restaurant, and it's. Again, I, hate- knew, I knew where it was going the whole time. Like as soon as he started serving, like going on about burgers, I was like. It's human. This is great. <laughs> I, I don't know if I necessarily... Cut, I mean, as soon as we followed her into the kitchen, I was like, oh, we're going to see something. The, the, the food's not what it seems. Before that, I could have seen it going... I just, I don't know what it is. It was this show, I just assumed immediately that's exactly what this was. Well, else did we learn? Rib Bone, uh, despite being a complete homicidal maniac, does care about dogs and is really upset with someone for leaving a dog in the car without popping the window open. Of all the things. So he, he kills that man and takes the dog. And he's very nice to the dog, from what we can see. Um, yeah. We learn a little bit more the gentleman and the scholar, because uh, we learn that... Uh, do, do you know what I loved? Is the gentleman's clearly having sex, right? It starts up in a close-up of him. And he's just sort of talking as he's having sex. He's making the movements, and I'm like... He's buying the scholar. That's what the reveal's going to do. Because you don't see who he's having sex with. Yeah. And the camera comes down, I'm like... It's going to be the scholar. But I said that to myself, kind of half-joking. Like... Nah, even that's that's too silly. But sure enough, the camera comes down and it's the scholar, mm. and they just continue having this conversation as as he's having sex with them. Yeah, it's just a it's just a completely normal conversation. It is, yeah, and then obviously all of the fact that they have this relationship, we we find out that the scholar feels mistreated. That the the gentleman doesn't even want to take him on his vacations when he gets his winnings. He's like, no, we're partners for now, but I'm not taking you with me. I want to date royalty, not you. Um. And the scholar actually ends up bonding with Arthur a little bit because Arthur saves him. So the scholar goes out of his way to uh, save their car because uh, the, the the cannibals mess with the cars so they all can't go away. So he fixes the engine a little bit for him. Uh, and there's this camaraderie. So in a weird way, the scholar is now a character that we sympathise with a little bit. Yes. So he's now yeah. kind of an ally and that's kind of cool. Filling, yeah. out the, filling out the racer ranks a little bit. Yeah, they're starting to feel like there's some characters behind just the wacky names. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Not much. Obviously, Scholar got the, the most here, but Gentleman had a bit. Uh, 
rib bone had a bit, you know. Yeah, it felt like we learned at least those three, who I would say are the three main ones behind our two main characters. Yeah. Uh, we we learned a little bit more about each of them this episode. So that's cool. Yeah. That's, that's just, uh, and obviously Christopher's plot, uh, that's uh, Arthur's partner who went investigating into the company and got kidnapped. Uh, he's with the dominatrix version of Aki. Uh, he wakes up, and I'm actually kind of digging his plot right now because it is very much the 80s sci-fi plot of like, oh no, we want to recruit you into our evil company. And we learn a little bit about the world. We learn there was the, what did they call it? The... The crack. It wasn't the crack. That's, that's what it looked like in the map, but it didn't call it the crack. I, oh. I think it, it was like the crack or something, wasn't it? It was similar, but I don't think it was the crack. I think it was it was it was like something you would say about a person. The scar. I think it may have been the scar. Yeah, it might have been. Uh but people fled from the scar but the heart went towards it and they found this goo, which they literally just call goo, and it's let them make all this stuff and it's letting them make super soldiers and robots and whatever else and uh, he, he goes investigating around the place and he even points out some of the plot uh, conveniences as he's doing it as well. It's like, that was one of my favourite bits. Yeah, because he's on the phone to Arthur and Arthur's trying to get information about Gracie's sister who she's wanting to get money for uh, and they eventually find out that the, the Hart Company owns the mental asylum which our sister's living in. So we set up this plot for next episode where they're going to take a small detour off the track and go and see if they can find her sister. Uh, but you know he's getting her more invested it's making her bond a little bit more with Arthur because he's helping her for proper things um, also I like that because obviously she gets, she's in the, the meat truck at the end because the, the butchers try to run off mm. and he, he stops him and he actually cuffs him he, 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 he saves the day, he's the generic hero white cop man uh, yes, as he's exactly. Been. and then she comes out with two meat hooks and just stabs the guy in the head <laughs> before she feeds him to her engine which is glorious yeah, it is. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to get bored of, of seeing the, the engine being fed. Me neither. Hey, do, do, you know, do you know what I'm digging? Is that Arthur is kind of typical generic white man, but I think he's all... Because it's, cause it's intentional, but B, because, I think because of that, he's actually a lot more endearing as the typical boring white hero than a lot of genuine typical white heroes are yeah it's because you know it's not genuine in that you know like you know that it's it's played up the character yeah. of this so it becomes almost nice yeah when you watch transformers 4 and it's mark Wahlberg, you're like oh, this is just boring and dull and shit i never had the misfortune yeah well I, 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 maybe it's in my mind because the new one's coming out and it's underperforming yes it only took five movies you bastards but finally it's underperforming but yeah, uh, you know, even I think even like you know, season one of Shield with Ward, like he was really bland. And he got more interesting because they gave him more stuff to do later on. But uh, yeah. at first, he was typical bland, generic action hero dude. Uh, and Arthur's like that, but he is more interesting because he's playing off of all these wacky things that are happening around him. Yeah, it works because he is the straight man in all of this. Actually, Joe, what I thought was interesting is I actually wasn't sure if Grace A knew. Or not just her, the rest of the racers. Like, did they just like, for a while? I thought, did they just know this was a cannibal place and that's just normal for them? Yeah, I can see what you mean. Because when he came back in and told her, and it cuts to her like thrown up, I'm like, oh, right, she didn't know. Okay, this is weird to her as well. Okay, right, I'm yeah. just getting getting it's, track of all it's, this. It's really bad that you have to have that contextualized. Yeah, uh, and but, obviously you know, like, it says the state of the of what you expect from. And them. even then, you think, oh, she's doing this for her sister, but are the rest of the racers a bunch of nut jobs who are okay with this? But then you see the gentleman spit out his soup when he realizes that the what's in it's also yeah. human. Uh, so no, it sets all that up. So we, we're, we're building the world, we're building who these people are, uh, and I thought this was a fun episode too. Uh, and while there was no actual racing in this one, they did get a cool little car chase scene at the end. Yeah, I I, I think I do miss the racing a little bit. Yeah, no, me too. But I, I get that you can't have it every, every uh, episode. Yeah, it, it would get old quick if you did it every episode. Yeah. So they got a little bit of car chasing in here, but it wasn't, it wasn't the race. And yeah. then next episode they're going to have the race on, but the main focus I think will be checking out the asylum, and then oh shit, we need to get back on the road quickly, or otherwise we're going to yeah. lose. Yeah, they try, presumably try and break the sister out if she's even there. I, I'm suspecting yeah. she's been moved. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, make it harder to get to her. That's what I'm thinking. I could be wrong. Aye. I could be wrong. Aye. Uh, yeah, I know it's weird to start making predictions for season two, but I really think season two is going to be, no, 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 it's actually on TV now. It's sanctioned. It's going to happen. And our heroes will volunteer 
for some reason. They'll win, obviously, this yeah, season. The heroes will have will be like forced into it still because they're they're like the the reigning champions, so they have to defend the title. I uh, see. I think it'll be more interesting if they have to make the choice. Like it's not so much because they already they get forced this yeah. year. They get forced this season. I think what's maybe more interesting is if they have to do it to maybe like save her sister. Like maybe it's just a case you like she's going to have to race if you don't. And I mean, yeah. maybe that's a bit too Hunger Games with the you know. No, I'll volunteer yeah, instead. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just I think if they have to choose to be heroes this time, um, it it completely changes the dynamic. But why I'm talking about season two and we don't even know if we're getting season two and we're only two episodes out of season one, I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, I just as soon as as soon as uh, business Aki started talking about like going global and being on TV and all that, I was like, mm, I feel like I know where this could go. Yeah, for a, a new season. So yeah, and then for season three, that's when it's not. Now just, you're getting ahead of yourself. That's when it's not just cars. That's like you have to go like across the Atlantic. It's all boats. <laughs> Is it like the Blood Drive Triathlon? Aye, aye, aye. aye. L- land air sea. Yes, exactly, exactly. Land air sea. Yeah. Blood plane. I want it. Blood helicopters. <laughs> st- st- starts in New York, ends in Paris. <laughs> That's the race. I want it. Uh, yeah, I, was not, I, mean, I didn't like it as much as the first episode, I would say, but I still had a lot of fun with this one. Yeah, I agree with that. It, it, it wasn't quite as strong, probably because it didn't have the, the race to really focus it and you know yeah. give it solid action throughout. But I think it, we've talked about the episode two curse before, about how they have to actually take a step back and do some exposition to yeah. properly set up everything else. And I think that's handled that quite well, actually. It is, and, and that episode two curse can sometimes extend another three or four episodes it and, can uh, do. so we'll, we'll see how this handles it going forward yeah i'm still having fun though uh, so no yeah. admittedly yeah if this was on in september the chances of us covering it with how many other shows would be on next to nothing but in the summer this is perfect summer viewing so yeah yeah especially when it's midweek and we've got like nothing else midweek at the minute yeah because well, going, just... going forward we've got yeah. nothing else midweek yeah fargo just had its finale so now Wednesday nights are pretty much just Blood Drive belongs to it, and that's that's it. So, no, uh, so we will be back for episode three. <laughs> we'll see how it progresses. Um, but no, yeah, and we didn't actually talk about the uh, the son. Uh, I mentioned him slipping in the blood. I never got to the end of that story. He slips in the blood, and his head goes into the uh, the mincer, and it's it is beautiful. Yeah, it's pretty great. I say that a lot about this, and people are probably think I'm weird that I'm constantly using the word beautiful when I'm talking about the the violence on this. But it really it is quite spectacular. I think, I think anyone who's stuck with the show and watched episode two and is consequently yeah. watching this will probably agree. They're they're probably that's, the sort of people who get it. That's a fair point. That is a that is a fair point. So here we are. Blood Drive episode 2, let us know what you thought of this episode in the comments below, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on Twitter at mail underscore fuzz, channel for channel updates, individual Twitters are on the screen. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash TV. see some of the bonuses that are over there if you want to help us out. Uh, but otherwise guys, that is us, so thank you very much for watching, keep watching TV, have you got any vanilla?